Manuscript, yeah, of the Septuagint, which the Jews wrote. Yeah. So what what Septuagint came to mean was just the, the um, Greek translation of the Old Testament. Correct. Now, in the same way that we have multiple English translations of the the, the, the Old Testament today, there were multiple Greek translations of the Septuagint. And so the one that the Christians reference today is, I understand it. I'm this, yeah, this is way above my pay grade. I, this is not. I, I do apologies, but I, my my understanding is it's based on what Origen preserved. Um, no, Origen didn't preserve it. You use it. Okay. So origin the, the, the Septuagint that we reference today is the one that sent the origin documents, yeah. Yeah. It's put in more by multiple correct. The thing is it was a Jewish document preserved by Jews. So the Jews the, the Jews of the Old Testament even asked they would have the, the language they would have spoken would have, uh, sorry, the, the biblical of the time of Jesus would have been Arabic, 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 Arabic. 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 Greek was definitely a spoken language, but unless they were Hellenic part of the Hellenic language. I don't know. No, the reason why they translated it was because they had been Hellenized. They were Jews that were pro Hellenist. Yeah, no, they were. No, I agree. We went to war with them. Exactly. That's why you have the Maccabean Revolt. That's why you have the Maccabean Revolt. The Maccabean Revolt was an entire revolt of Hellenized Jews, right? David and Goliath. Oh, no, David and Goliath were definitely outnumbered. Weird. What are we doing? Oh, yeah, you're filming. Why are you filming? We just having a conversation. The optics aren't good for the chair. Just because we're having a conversation, I mean, you have to be filmed. He'll edit that bit out. Anyway, but the point is, right, so so we do know that there were Jews that were a part of a Hellenizing movement, right? Yeah, 100 percent Yeah, that's why you had the Let me finish. Can I finish your point? But the point is, the point is, the Septuagint was done by believing Jews out of necessity because the, the language of a lot of Jews in the diaspora was Greek. And when they chose to translate Hebrews, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, they used the word penuma. And it's unequivocal. Penuma means spirit, which means that the Jews that translated the Septuagint understood that passage to mean spirit. So this is a Jewish interpretation of Genesis, not a Christian can, can, interpretation can I, of Genesis, a, a Jewish interpretation of Genesis. Okay, can, can I ask a question? Yeah, go on. Um, origin, well, how, how long after, um, there's two questions. First, how long after Jesus was origin? Uh, I think it was like a hundred and something years. Yeah. And the second question, you said the Jews of the diaspora. Were the disciples, where were they? I, I don't know your history, so it's, I'm, this is genuine. This is not a trying to get you. This is a, a, this is a genuine question. Were they Jews from Israel or were they Jews from the diaspora? Right, the, so the apostles, yeah. they were Jews from inside Israel. And were they Hellenized Jews or were they, like, what kind of Jews were they? Well, I mean, the thing is, the, 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 there's, there's evidence of penetration of... Greek culture uh, yeah. into Jewish life. Uh, completely. I'm, like, that's in, in, I'm just trying to ascertain what language they were speaking, that's all. Well, as, as fishermen, they were probably speaking Aramaic. Okay. <laughs> but, 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 Greek had penetrate, but Greek had penetrated into, into, into that region. Completely. Yeah, so, so, so but my, 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 I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm genuinely just trying to understand. I'm not yeah. trying to trip up the Christians. I know you're not. Desire. But so, I just feel that, that, that my answers, so, my, wait, 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 I'm trying to give you full answers to your questions. So I'm not, I know you're not trying to trick me, I don't feel you're trying to trick me, and nor am I trying to defend, I'm just trying to give you a complete answer to your question. And the point is that the, the Jewish, the, sorry, the, the Greek language had penetrated into Palestine. Like it, it, it penetrated. I mean, we wouldn't call it Palestine, and they wouldn't call it Palestine. Uh, no, that's so a weird thing they to do. They would have. They would have. They would have. Yeah, but I, I'm a Israel. European, and the Romans called it Palestine. But the, they would have called it Galilee. They would have referred to Judah. They would have referred to Nazareth. They would have referred to the local regions, and well, that's what you see. Israel, the land of Israel. They, actually, the, the people at that time had a more regional sense of their own identity, oh, they, they, rather the than a, a concept of an Israelite. At one point, at one point the, land, the land was always called Israel. 
but yeah. the, the, the tribes were yeah, split yeah, into two kingdoms. Yeah, and, 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 and but, but there was you, uh, what I'm saying is, when you read a, when you read yeah, first exactly. century documents, what you realise is that the people in they those the, documents they had a regional sense of yeah. their own identity. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't often say, "I'm from Israel." They would go, "I'm from Nazareth." They would Nazareth, say, "We are from Israel. We are the children of Israel." No. They used that identity. That was no, the identity. No, you're, I'm sorry, bro. You, you're not listening to what I'm saying, and you're coming out with sound bites. <laughs> The, the first century documents, literally from the region, show that the people. I'm not saying they don't say what you're saying, but they also they had a strong sense of their own regional identity. So whatever I'm not region against that. Great. So I, I don't understand why you're trying to offer a correction to it. Then. I offered a correction to Palestine. I, I think we've gone too far yeah. away from the first. Yeah. Did the Romans about, call it Palestine? About, about this whole rule what? thing. <laughs> after after this period. Yeah, like 136 AD, I think. It was. It, the yeah, it was once a, they, they when they read that. Yeah. I don't know the exact date, but around then. I'm not trying to make a political the, point. The, the right? I'm just yeah, saying that the, exactly. They, they renamed. I'm, the, the, yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to make a political point out of it, bro. Would like, you consider a Jew? With I mean, we've lost the Septuagint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll answer both your questions. Would you consider a Jew yeah, in the first century with a Roman citizenship to be Hellenized? Um, or oh, not necessarily. So I actually. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so I don't, I don't know so if because obviously it was a portray right. under under the the, the Hashmonites, they has, has, how do you say it in English? Hasmoneans. Hasmoneans. Uh, Hasmoneans. There we go. Hasmoneans. <laughs> okay. Um, they they had a breakaway state, but prior and post it was under Rome. But I don't know who was granted citizenship. That's my question. Okay, I well, don't know if you were a peasant living on a farm. Yeah. If you were considered a Roman citizen. Or no, not. you wouldn't have been. Yeah. You earned yeah. Roman yeah. citizenship. If unless yeah. you were born to. Were, uh, unless you were born to a Roman family, you earned Roman citizenship. I think Paul was had Roman citizenship. Yeah, Paul had. Yeah. So, so, so the, the, the reason that I was, uh, was probably was because he was if they were hell and not. Oh, and so yeah. I was, I was um, like cycling through all of them in my head, and I was like, well. No, but Paul did have Roman citizenship. But so the, the whole revolt yeah, was yeah. against Hellenism, so we know there was a huge force uh, yeah. Yeah. for Hellenizing of Jews. My question was more about the. Just, just for the, clarification, for those of you that don't know, the revolt he's talking about is the Maccabean revolt. Aren't yeah, it? yeah, or the Jewish revolt. So, right. like, yeah, so that's hundreds of years before Jesus. The, 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 the revolts the were one? continuous. The, the, the revolts were Bar continuous. Bar yeah, but, but Bar Kokhba. Bar Kokhba. Bar Kokhba. Yeah, yeah, but the Maccabean revolt was the only successful. So the Maccabees, Bar Kokhba, like. Okay, what I'm talking about is the Jewish revolts. Yeah. There's like there's a period where the Jews are revolting against the Hellenization yes. of their country, and it spans centuries. Yeah, um, that's but, the same thing in Bar Kokhba. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay. And so what we we thought that Bar Kokhba could have been the Messiah to go back to our previous conversation. There's a story of one of our rabbis who's in tears because he'd said that Bar Kokhba was going to be the, the Messiah, but then he was killed. So from a Jewish perspective. He couldn't be the Messiah because he was killed, and the Jews hadn't been in gathered, and there wasn't peace, and we hadn't rebuilt the temple. But separate conversation. But to bring it back to a completely <laughs> random question. Sorry, would the Messiah die in your understanding? Yes or no? Uh, would would the Messiah die? No, I mean, uh, 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 I don't. As I, I always like being truthful, I, as I say for the camera, I am a symbol Jew. I spent a few <laughs> months in religious seminary. Okay. From my knowledge, I don't know. The Messiah is a person. Yeah, yeah. He's, not, he's not divine in the Jewish tradition. Okay. And people die. No, that's not true. That's not true, Joseph. <laughs> okay, sorry I'm lying, everyone. From the Jewish no, tradition... It's not, that, it's not that you're lying, it's that you're just speaking in ignorance. If you, if you look... <laughs> he, he this is not an expert. Let's just like put it out there. Just right, because if, if, if you look at... If you look Which yeshiva did you study at, by the way? One, right, yeah, it, it's called, oh, uh, it's called oh. studying oh. history, right? If you, if you look... At the, the, the reality is that when Joseph presents Judaism, he often does it like through a certain historical perspective, a Jewish perspective. The, the, ign the rabbinic perspective that ignores the diversity that was there on the ground in the first century if you look at the writings of the Essenes if you look at l l writings that we know were, were, were around and permeating in the first century there is uh, clearly a strain of Jewish thought that did see the Messiah as more than just a man more than just a man, as okay. it's uh, as so, at least a semi-divine figure. So the the normative Jewish position, the rabbinic tradition, the rabbinic position, the, the Talmudic position, the Talmudic so, position. So the let's call which, it what it is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank, thank you all for guys explaining my, my tradition to me. Glad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could help. <laughs> uh, so each of us have a dog in this race. You have a Christian dog. I have a Jewish dog. 
Um, <laughs> this, not, this sounds like, this sounds like the beginning of a really bad joke. Um, and we have a rich history, yes, which we've documented for millennia. And according to our tradition, it will deviate from what you, you you will present everything that I say as aha, but this is just the Talmudic tradition. If you look at the the Essenes, they were saying what we were saying. I would ask then, how big was the Essenes? Where was the Essenes? But there was definitely there were many splinter groups from Judaism. We have splinter groups today, but from our tradition, yeah, the 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 Pharisees, the rabbinic tradition was always the the dominant, the Sadducees were another large sect of Jews and the two clashed and the Sadducees were far more likely to be Hellenized than the Pharisees, the, the wars we're talking about it was largely the Pharisees that were the taking the The Sadducees controlled the temple So at different times both would control the temple yeah. Yeah. And, and To be in the temple, and the to be in the temple, yeah, to be in the temple. sorry just to correct you, yeah. not to correct you but to add to what you're saying to be in the temple you just had to be a Kohen um, yeah. or uh, if you were assisting the Kohen, um, one of the Levites yeah. um, and you could have any belief and still exist there. The and Sanhedrin yeah. was was more of a problem because that actually determines what the law is rather than just the function, like religious ceremony, ceremonial functions of the temple. Yeah. You're actually defining law. And there were Sadducees even that would sit on the Sanhedrin. Yeah. Um, but by and large, the Pharisees were the dominant. The, um, the Pharisees were the, the were, was popular Judaism. And it, and it arose out of the, the legacy of the Maccabean Re I know you believe it goes right back as to a, Moses. As an example, many of the things that Jews, there, there are certain edicts, decrees, that the Ezra's court, the Anshay Knesset Hagadola, um, which makes him a Pharisee, um, they, they instituted, they instituted laws that Jews follow to this day. So I, was, I mentioned one of them before. We will read, all Jews will read um, the, the Torah in a synagogue on a Monday and a Thursday. That was instituted by Ezra. He, he was not a Sadducee. Um, we have a tradition. I don't think there were Sadducees in times at Ezra. Um, but a Sadducee is someone who rejects the oral law. Yeah. So, I, I, so someone who rejects the, the oral law. Clearly, Ezra didn't if he's instituting law. Yeah, and, and, and so my point, my point to you is that you try to present Judaism of the first century as if it's just one thing, but the reality is anyone who looks into this issue will know immediately that that is not true. What was I presenting as? Right, just, hold on. Oh, well, but, but, and, and you're just because you're characterizing right, me as saying something, I'm just right, asking what was I right, saying so you're objecting I'll, to. I'll come to that. It, it, it is, is that you're trying to say that you know, it, it, it was a set. It's a settled issue. What, what's the settled rabbinic, issue? That it's the rabbinic tradition that is representative of what Judaism is, and and that is just not true. When you look, it is the rabbinic tradition is what survived along with the messianic tradition, and the, lots of the other traditions can, that were going off in Israel at the time uh, all went right, to the wall. Genuine right? question to what you're saying. No, 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 no well, let me finish. Uh, so, so my point to you is to, to try and say, uh, to try and present as you did, this idea that Jews have never believed that the Messiah is a divine figure is not true because there were Jews in the first century that clearly did see the Messiah as a divine figure. Can, and it wasn't just the Christian Jews. Can I make, there were other kinds of Jews that did that as well. Can I ask one question to you? Yeah, so I can show an unbroken chain of... <laughs> of, many Jewish, of, many, of, of many Jewish communities yeah. around the world, all echoing what I, the tradition, the chain, oh, the, the tradition, the Mesorah in Hebrew, that I'm the speaking, the yeah. inheritance. Um, can you give me any example of that messianic chain? Because you're saying there's two, there was two traditions that were passed down the ages. One was the rabbinic, and one was the messianic. Yeah. So can you give me uh, this, like, the, like literally? Who were these messianic communities that you're speaking about that preserved this tradition? Or are you talking about, which is what I understand, in the 60s and 70s there was a movement from the evangelical movement to Hebrews and connect with the Jewish people and they set up things like Jews for Jesus to actively go in and recruit and also to return to the Hebrew, what they would say is the Hebrew roots of Christianity. Yeah. And they looked at scripture, maybe they looked at older writings and tried to reconstruct what they believe would have been a, a more authentic Christianity or a, a Hebrews Christianity. But I'm asking, can you show me, ignoring these communities, can, we, can you show me like a 9th century Jewish community that was messianic, 
that's connected to a 13th century and a 17th century, and all the way to the modern era, this um, messianic tradition that you were talking about that was passed through the ages. Okay, so the, the question is framed incorrectly. So in terms of, in terms of you, you want to see the continuous tradition, it's yeah. called the church. Jews were a part of that church along with the Gentiles, which is a fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies, that that's exactly what the Messiah would do. He would bring the nations to the worship of the God of Israel, and that is exactly what happens in the church. So there's your 2,000 year old tradition. And there's always been Jews as part of that church over that 2,000 years, but obviously, you know, Jews are a minority in the world, so they're going to be a minority in the church. So, 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 so your question is framed incorrectly. I accept that the Messianic uh, Jewish movement is out, born of missionary effort. Yeah, it's born of missionary efforts. Um, but you're, you're, you're trying to you're trying to characterize our position as if it's some kind of um, some, something that we've just cobbled together for missionary purposes. That there's real scholarship behind what we're saying, right? N.T. Wright is one of the foremost scholars of Second Temple, first century Judaism, right? Like, you wouldn't stand a chance debating this guy. I right? don't debate religion, right. I debate I politics. Don't. I know you do, I know you do. <laughs> That's my, but, my, area. But my point is, it, it, it's, not <laughs> that, it's not that Christians have just cobbled together a couple of quotes here and a couple of quotes there for the simple purposes of missionary outreach to the Jewish people. It's that this so, is actually grounded in real historical so, study so, so, of what the Jewish religion was at the time of so, Jesus so to bring and it back, before. So to bring it back to the original point, what are you arguing against that I said? Because I'm kind of lost a little in this conversation. Right, so what I... And then, then what I want to, to, the reason I'm asking that is yeah. I then want to say if what you're saying tallies with my understanding of like my tradition. So what, what I understand you have to have said in this conversation, either before the camera or after the camera started rolling, right? And I wasn't planning to, to get into a, a, a video debate with you. But the, what, I, what I heard, right, rightly or wrongly, was that you were trying to present the idea that the Messiah wasn't divine has always been a settled question amongst the Jews. And I'm saying, that that is a settled question within the Talmudic tradition after Jesus, but it was not a settled question amongst the Jews at the time of Jesus. And that's exactly why there were so many Jews willing to accept that Jesus was divine, because in their understanding of their religion at the time, that was quite a, a Jewish way to read the Old Testament's promises about the Messiah. So how many you said? I have before? something that I want to ask him connected to this once you're done. I just wanted to show you the words in Daniel because I asked him yeah. about this before. And uh, if, if maybe this, okay, if you want we, to respond to him. First, yeah, yeah, I was going to say otherwise. Okay. Yeah. And also I do want to go full to Mandy C. Mates at some point. Uh, <laughs> and that's not here, unfortunately, uh, for me, my yeah. video content. Um, we love you too much. <laughs> but you also, as I said before, you also love the Nazis, you love the Dawagandists, you love everybody. In, in a uh, sense, yes. yes. Uh, if I could just clarify that, just to, to mean that effectively, like, um, we hold love as to, mean, like, to will the good for somebody, and the good for someone is essentially God. So, for example, like, if you had the chance to, like, share the gospel with Hitler, would you just say no, or would you actually do it? And that's, that's kind of what we mean, like, yeah. we love people. We had a chance to evangelize. Horrendous people. No, 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 that we want to kiss him in the mouth. It's not that's not what we mean, yeah. but yeah. We, we sort of value him as a human being. Like, yeah, he has like interesting value as a human being, but his actions, you know, tend to be the most horrific. I'm hoping you don't want to kiss me on the mouth either. Because now I, I am getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't want to kiss you on the mouth either. <laughs> um, so, kind of. So, yeah, you said that there was a lot, which is why a large number of Jews. In the time of Jesus, followed him. That's not my understanding. My understanding is very few Jews actually follow Jesus, and the overwhelming no, that was not what I, said. I thought you just said. That's I said that, that there, there was a lot of Jews who became Christians like the, in the, the time of yeah, Jesus. Yeah, but, but 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 the point. Uh, my uh, understanding in is his own lifetime, he wasn't followed by thousands of people. Like, yeah, that's that's my point. And so the, the majority, hundreds. the majority of Jews never became Christian. And if you're saying otherwise, you have to show me the scholarship. No, my no one said that's that. not okay. So what, I I said was, you, I what I said was that you have tried to present it as a settled question in the Jewish tradition that the Messiah was not divine. And what I'm saying to you is that doesn't stand up to any scrutiny of Judaism in the first century. So I can show you 
the first century, right? The, like the, the Mishnah is probably the most authoritative and the, the most comprehensive Jewish work from that period. But we also have like the Tosefta. We have many, many Jewish writings, and all of them speak of the Messiah as being as not being divine. None of them speak as him being divine. So like you're saying, there were many writings that spoke about the Messiah being divine from the first century. Like which documents are you talking about? Yeah. Daniel. Daniel. Can we go to Daniel, please? This is Daniel <laughs> 7. Okay, can we go to Daniel 7? Can you read 10 to 14, please? Either in Hebrew or whatever, so you can give me your Talmudic view of this. So in Christianity, we hold this as being like one of the four foretellings of Jesus, yes. uh, the idea of the Son of Man. Yeah. Of course. Okay. So yeah, like, 10 to 14. Let me just read it with me. Just context. Sorry, I'm going to have to read the, the whole thing. Oh, yeah. well, you've got some of me. I'll do it on mine. Sorry. 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 No, 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 yeah, they need to read everything in context, I'm sorry. So we've got to read 10, so I really apologise, it's not going to be an exciting stream, you can put this bit out if you want. If you want. Okay. Read it in Hebrew loud so we can I'm not doing a formal debate. Like like yeah. no, no, then we're going to be here for all day, because I might just drop out of this conversation. It's like you're here, right? This is kind of like, this is like, kind of like, Speaker's yeah. Corner, and but I'm also, I want to go make a video yeah. as well. Like, this, like, this is Speaker's Corner, um, really I want to make a, no, no, I want to make a video, no, no, I want to make a video of Speaker's Corner before it gets started. Uh, can we, like, okay, instead yeah. of going into the whole of Daniel, yeah. which is gonna, like, I've literally got to read the entire. No, you don't. You just have to do from ten. No, to 10. I know you say that, but like, uh, as someone, uh, like, uh, is actually going to respond. I want to know the context. You know the I need to know the context of something before yeah, commenting no, on it. But I've kind of been here all day now. Well, it's ten verses. And what I'll do is. Are, are they what? Well, no, no, can, no, can I take every check? It's like literally my last speaker's corner um, before I leave. But because it's like oh, 10 and that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go home and I'll just do a live stream. Oh, and I'll do a Q&A. Yes. No, <laughs> oh, so how do I mute? Uh, uh, mute uh, uh, end video. Finished. We're ending video one. It got destroyed again. This is the best bit. What's that? <laughs> no, I, I want to say something which I don't want to be on camera. Yeah, so, uh, I don't mind if you're muted. Um, so I'll cut it.